Hello everybody, Manix here. Got another tabletop knife review for you right here, right now. Feel free to subscribe to that little bell notification if you don't want to miss any of my weekly knife, gear, ADC, flashlight, gun, ammo videos. Feel free to support me on Patreon, link in the description. Every penny counts. Thank you so much. This is kind of a blast from the past, another decade ago. Knife. I seem to review a lot of those these days, don't I? Kershaw OD1. You ever seen this one? It's got that clean, black and gray Kershaw look to it. Very beautiful. Really nice and proprietary looking, actually. Good looking frame lock right there. But there's something very interesting about this knife. It's in the name, the OD, saying for overdrive. This little mechanism up here. It's not a flipper. It is what they call the overdrive or OD mechanism. It's a mechanical arm that swings 90 degrees and in turn moves the blade out 180 degrees fully. Really, really cool. Very ingenious design. And as far as I know, only the OD-1 and its little brother, the OD-2 right here, are the only knives that have ever used it. So far, they have not made any other knives with that mechanism right there. It's really, really cool. There are a lot of advantages to it. It's, it's such a simple thing. It's not even that big of a deal, but it functions very well. It's really, really, really awesome. Look at the specs out of the way, like I always do. 14C 28N blade steel on here. It's an American Sandvik steel. Comparable to ATR 13 MOV. 420HC if it's got a good heat treatment on it. It's, it's, it's like a lower mid, eh, maybe just like medium tier blade steel, but it keeps costs down. It, overall, it's good. Gets extremely sharp. Won't hold an edge forever, but it holds it for long enough. Just keep your knife maintained, keep it stropped, keep it oiled, and you shouldn't have any issues. G10 handle scale right here, 410 stainless steel frame on there for the rest of the knife. Handle length is 4.125 inches. Overall length is 7.0625 inches, which means if you did some math in your head real quick somehow, the blade length is 2.9375 inches, which is barely a hair, just a hair under 3 inches for the blade, and just a hair over 7 inches for the overall length on here. So I would qualify this as a medium, medium size folder. It's a little bit thin. You know, some knives even at this length are a little bit wider, but I would still consider it medium size. Weighs 3.4 ounces according to Kershaw's official website. But let's take a look at that. Let me use my scale here and weigh it. Janky scale right here. 2.91 ounces. Huh, that is considerably less than 3.4, so it is just under 3 ounces right here. I believe that. It doesn't feel that heavy. It's pretty dense. Nice little FRN backspacer right there. Tip up and tip down carry. Love that pocket clip. It's pretty much the same pocket clip you've seen on the Kershaw Skyline. Another knife I wish they would bring back. Not ambidextrous, unfortunately. It's only on this side, sorry. There is... A lock bar stabilizer right there hiding right under the pod clip as you can see it's completely invisible you can't see it with the pod clip in the way it's funny for years and years and years when i've been lusting after this knife it's been discontinued a long time ago i want to say maybe 2014 they stopped making these somewhere around there early 2010s they stopped pretty quickly after they released them but for the longest time i didn't think they had a lock bar stabilizer but no when i actually got one new in box at a gun store near me i noticed that little lock bar stabilizer right there, which means you cannot overextend the lock bar, which is awesome. All frame lock knives should have that. There's no excuse not to have one, I don't think. Texture on the G10s, medium, medium, light traction, kind of like a Spyderco Tenacious line of knives. Very simple, very clean looking knife right here. I love frame locks. Frame locks are so cool, especially when they're two-tone like this, G10 on one side, stainless steel on the other. Man, it's beautiful. Kind of a bead blasted finish on here on both the pocket clip and the stainless steel handle scale on the blade. It's all bead blasted. Good looking. Um, it's a very economy, sort of cheaper way to get a finished look to a knife. However, it does not play nice with the elements. It tends to rust very easily. So just got to keep your knives oiled up and stored away properly if you want to avoid that. Uh, it's one common complaint amongst a lot of Kershaws. Thank God this one is not assisted. It's completely manual. Just a preference of mine. I like the texturing on this lock bar right here. Really can let your thumb dig in there when you're trying to disengage it. This one's still somewhat new. I got it new in box, so the frame is still kind of getting stuck on there. It clicks every now and again when I really thwack it out. Well, that time it didn't, but it's still kind of getting broken in. Even though I have been using it for a few months now, but 
Little stop pin. Little stop pin right there. But it works fine. No problems there. It's good lockup overall. There's actually a decent amount of side to side on this one. I haven't adjusted it in a while, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten that after the video. But it, it's moving pretty freely, so it can afford to be tightened down a little bit more. No up and down, just like it should. Frame locks are pretty strong. They're stronger than liner locks simply because your grip helps enforce the lock itself. Not so much on the design. It's more just because, again, your, your fist, you're clenching it. The fact that you are clenching it is what is helping tighten it. Even if the lock was the same thickness as the liner, it still would be stronger, technically. Carries like a dream because it's on this flush, smooth steel back right here. This handle scale, anyway, the pod clip is resting on. There's no texturing under there, so it's very smooth. Can be swapped to tip down. Less will be poking out of your pocket if you do it that way. But if you put it tip up, there's a good half or almost two thirds of an inch of extra distance right here. I don't know why they really oriented that way, but it is what it is. Uh, I, I still prefer tip up anyway, so. But there's going to be quite a bit poking out of your pocket. It's a little shark fin poking out of there. But again, if it were tip down, you'd have considerably less. Just something to keep in mind. Similar issue to the Kershaw Skyline. It's actually very, very similar to that knife in some ways. This one's just a frame lock. That one's a liner lock. And this one happens to have the OD mechanism. That one is a flipper. Very, almost the exact same knife, though, in, in all the other respects. Very similar in some ways. Very elegant. Very, look at that. So beautiful. So simple. Let me get a hand out of the way. Such a simple, elegant piece of hardware right there. It's really cool. Simple texture right here. Just simple three body screws right there. Very simple blade. It's just a spear point. Elegant looking. Elegant, elegant, elegant. Sometimes less is more. You know what I mean? It's not my first blade shape choice. I would prefer a clip or a drop point, not a spear point. I think spear points are just a little bit more limited in their use. Not as much belly to work with. I would even prefer a Tonto. For this knife in particular, the blade actually fits very well. We have a very, almost a one-to-one -one blade to handle ratio right there. That's good. Very simple, very elegant. It's comfortable. You can just take a look at it and you can see how comfortable it is. You know, not uncomfortable or anything. It's not the most ergonomic knife in the world, but it's not bad. This little choil right here, you can see it's shaved off right there just to fit your thumb a little bit better. Nice and rounded at the edges. So it's comfortable, it's not too harsh or anything. So it carries well, flicks out every single time really fast, good lockup overall, decent blade steel. I like the texturing, the traction on here is good. No jumping on the spine or anything like that. That's kind of a miss, but it does kind of add to its elegance. The fact that there is no jumping or anything just keeps it more smooth. So it's kind of nice. Almost symmetrical looking, that's nice too, that's cool. Lightweight. No, could have been lighter. I mean, it is a steel frame lock with a Denzel Slava G10 on there, so it's not the lightest knife for the size, but under three ounces is pretty good. And you get a decent amount of blade here, too. It's pretty long. Again, just under three inches. Three-inch blade, it's usually more than enough for EDC use. You might even argue this is pretty big for EDC. Now, elephant in the room, what is the OD mechanism if you are not familiar with it? It's a mechanical arm, it's just a piece of steel, that's all it is, a hunk of steel that rotates on its own pin, its own pivot pin, if you will, that's embedded within there that you cannot see. Uh, another side note here, what adds to the elegance is the fact that the pivot screw is underneath the G10 handle scale right there, that's really nice looking, you don't even see a screw. That's really cool too. It's still adjustable on the, the non-presentation side, I would say, but it's really cool, you see all the technical stuff back here, all the hardware and everything, and then you flip it around, it's just like, blank canvas, or they're just beautiful, elegant. It, it works so well. It's literally just a slab of steel that rotates on its own pin. And you can see it moving in tandem with the blade at half the speed. Literally exactly half the speed. It's 90 degrees while the blade opens up 80 degrees. It's really, really cool. Now, what is the advantage of this over a flipper? The main thing is with flippers, usually you gotta give the knife a wrist flick to open up. This one you do not need a wrist flick, it just opens up on its own every single time. And you can almost, almost open it conventionally. That is the one issue I do have with flippers, is you have to open them up fast. You gotta have it open or it's closed. There's no in between. It's not like a thumb stud knife where you can choose to open it slowly and conventionally. Nope, it's gotta be opened. A flipper, you can't slowly open a flipper knife. You gotta either open it or not open it. With this, on the other hand, it kind of gives you a leeway a little bit. I'm trying to open it slowly, but the detent in there is keeping it shut. So if I got it started, I might have to tighten down the pivot screw too, but let me just get it started here. Basically, it gives you, you can kind of 
slowly open it. Sort of. It's it's somewhat of an advantage if you don't want to flick it open every single time. But for me, it's just it's cool that you don't need any wrist movement either. Just just by its sheer design, just by moving your index finger down like a you know a third of an inch or so, you get that blade open every single time. It's really really cool. Same thing on the OD2. Same thing. Just already have a review on this guy. I had this knife for almost a decade. Now. Yeah, probably like 10 years now. Yeah. 10, 11 years. That's for a long, long time. Similar knife in a lot of ways. Looks very similar. It's a liner lock and has FRN handles instead of G10. It's not a frame lock, but same mechanism on there. Really, really cool knives. Love these two. Love them a lot. I don't know why they didn't bring this back. I'd love to see more knives with the OD mechanism. Really awesome piece. It's so simple, too. It's not that big of a deal. It's just a separate piece of metal that rotates on its own pin. Easy. Less is more. You know, no frills. There's nothing really fancy going on here. It just looks very, very classy, very simple. But it's a good EDC slash almost tactical blade. Almost. It could flex into that philosophy of use there. But anyway, that is it. Kershaw OD1. Bring these back, Kershaw. Seriously.